Closing out our lineup, Kevin Canavan, CEO and co-founder, Focus Motion. What is up, Dodgers Stadium? I might never get a chance to say that again, so I have to say it now. My name is Kevin Canavan. I'm the CEO and the co-founder with Focus Motion and we are the movement intelligence that the wearable space has been waiting for. Most of you are familiar with the wearable space and its explosiveness over the past few years and how it's going to grow over the next few more years. You might have heard about the Fitbit IPO, you might have heard about the Apple Watch, and it's supposed to represent 300 million devices and $53 billion in hardware sales by the year 2018. That is a lot of devices. And some of you may have bought devices in the past, I know that I have, but you may have thrown them away, you may not be using them anymore because it may not be useful to you anymore. But we still bought them. And we bought them because we believed in the promise of the wearable space. We believed that these devices were going to make us bigger, faster, stronger athletes. That we were going to live longer, that we were going to understand our bodies better. That we were going to have rich biometric, physiological, and biological insights about ourselves. But since 2006, since Nike Plus came out, most of what we've seen from these devices for tracking has related to steps, stairs, and sleep. And while these can be very useful for people, at Focus Motion, we think that there is so much more to human movement than just steps, stairs, and sleep. So why aren't companies tracking this? The hardware for most of these devices is fine. The software is fine. But the algorithm isn't smart enough to detect real human movements. But if you could develop an algorithm that actually understand how people are performing and what they're doing and how many times they're doing it, you could penetrate into new markets and you could explode this ecosystem. You could also help with problems such as tedious manual entry that you've seen your physical therapist do in a therapy session. You can eliminate essentially the subjectiveness of human observation of you having to go to a clinic and having someone watch you or the expense of computer vision equipment that may or may not be supported by a company like Microsoft next year. So if you could make a better algorithm, you could change the space completely and open up more opportunities. And that's what we've done at Focus Motion. We are an OS agnostic and a device hardware agnostic SDK software platform that helps any developer or hardware manufacturer instantly understand real human movement. And we don't make hardware. We don't make end user software. We are the connective technology that exists between the developer, the user, the application, and the hardware. And we translate the human movement that comes through the system. And since we're software, we're infinitely deployable. You can put us in the cloud, we can run our technology on the phone, we can be in the watch, and we're talking with chip manufacturers right now about embedded opportunities. And the way that it works is that you download our SDK, you download our technology, you plug us into your system. And then when your users are wearing wearable devices, you send the sensor data through our algorithm, and we determine what the user has done, how many times they've performed the activity, and how well they've performed that activity. And it's one thing to tell you about what we can do. It's a completely different thing to show you. So I'd like to welcome Ellen Rowe to the stage. A big round of applause for Ellen Rowe, please. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through a few exercises today. We're going to run through hammer curls, we're going to run through lat raises, and this is just a very small sample set of what we can read. And just so you know, I'm not gaming you, how many hammer curls should we do? I'm going to call on someone over here. Six. All right, so we're going to do six hammer curls, and we're going to do some lat raises as well. So how many lat raises should we do between, let's say, five and ten? Ten? All right, so we're going to do six. <laughs> we're going to do six, and we're going to do ten. All right? So what she's going to do is she's going to fire up, this is a demo application, and she's firing it up, and what we're doing is we're transferring the data right now from the wearable device, which is a pebble, to the phone. And it could be any wearable device. It could be a Microsoft band, it could be the Apple Watch, it could be anything in the Android Wear family. And as she's doing the, the exercise, we're sending the data, and we'll evaluate it when she hits stop at the end. And just like any person at the gym, she might take a walk, she might wipe her brow, she might take a drink. And if any of you have had Fitbits, you know you can shake it and get steps. It's extremely important for our algorithm not only to detect what she's done, but to omit what she shouldn't be counting. And so she'll come back and she'll do the lat raises. And while you're seeing her do these movements with her arms, our algorithm is seeing these beautiful waveforms come through the system. And every single waveform for every activity is unique. It's a little bit like human speech. 
So what we're doing is we're translating the language of human movement and building deep insights into what those movements mean. So she finishes up, and then she hits stop on the application, and it says exactly what she did, how many times she did it. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> now, there's one more deeper insight. If she presses on the activity itself, we can see how well she performed it. So you can tell that her form wasn't quite perfect. You can tell she was going a little bit too fast, and also the angle that she was raising her arm was a little bit too high. That should be around 90 degrees, but she was doing it on average at about a 111. And then, sorry, a big round of applause for Ellen, thank you. Now you can imagine the impact that something like this could have on different industries. And we're gonna have a huge impact on industries that can't take advantage of wearable technology right now. There's industries like training that represent 52 million people in a $25 billion space that they can't track any of their activities. You have, you have groups like yoga. Right now, no one can track poses. We can't. And that's 17 million people in a $7 billion space. Additionally, you have workforce monitoring. That's 13 million workers in U.S. manufacturing alone right now, representing $15 billion in workers' comp cases this year. And lastly, you have physical therapy. That's 20 million people. And if any of you have been through physical therapy, and I know that some of you have, you know that one of their leading technologies is to give you a sheet of paper and to send you home and to tell you to do the things that are on the piece of paper. So we're going to have a huge impact on all of these industries. And the beginning of that impact starts tonight. We're announcing some incredible partnerships, a study, and a pilot. So if you're familiar with the NIOSH, that is the National Institute for Occupational Sa Safety and Health, and essentially that's the CDC version of OSHA. They're the ones that write all of the protocols for how you're supposed to lift something in a factory or manufacturing setting. We're the leading commercial partner with them, along with Kinetic, a wearable technology company, to develop better protocols using wearable technology for manufacturing workers. Additionally, we have physical therapy partners, Reflection Health, and Force Therapeutics who are using our algorithm to penetrate deeper into home health care and teletherapy. And we have an incredible pilot with the Dodgers where we're helping them learn more about how their athletes train and how they recover. Focus Motion has best-in-class algorithms, and we're patenting every single piece of our technology. We have more movement data in this space than anyone else, and we're not held back by hardware changes or software changes. Whoever wins in hardware will be there. Whoever wins in software will be there. And we have an incredible team. We have some fairly smart MBAs, and we have some absolutely brilliant engineers who are the, sorry, who are the brilliant people that brought you the technology that you saw here today. Focus Motion is building and has created the most advanced, the most open, the most capable SDK and software platform for understanding human movement in the wearable space. And whether it happens in athleticism, whether it happens in physical therapy, whether it happens in workforce monitoring, or whether it happens in hardware or software, we are going to be the engine that powers the evolution of this space beyond steps, stairs, and sleep. Thank you. <laughs>